show that root 2 is irrational. So we're going to use the contradiction method. The first thing is we're going to assume that root 2 is rational. So if we get to assume that root 2 is rational, a rational number can be written in the form a over b. It can be expressed as a fraction. Therefore, root 2 is going to be equal to a over b. So this point, I'm going to square both sides to remove the square root. And that is going to give us 2 being equal to a squared divided by b squared. And our cross multiply, that is going to give us a squared being equal to 2b squared. So if you hear that 4 is equal to 2 times a certain number b, this means this 2 can go into what? Can go into 4. Okay? Whatsoever number that you can multiply with 2, two for you to get 4, just know that both of these numbers, they are able to go into what? They are able to go into 4. Now, when we say 4 squared can be divided by 2 squared, this also means that 4 itself can be divided by 2. If we say 9 squared can be divided by 3 squared, this also means that 9 can be divided by 3. Now here we are saying these 2 can go into what? A squared. Because for us to be able to get A squared, we are multiplying 2 by a certain number. So those 2 numbers are factors. A can be divided by 2. So we are saying A squared can be divided by 2. Now whenever, if we say 4 squared is able to be divided by 2, this also means that 4 can be divided by 2. If we say 27 squared can be divided by 9. Just know that 27 also can be divided by what? By 9. So if we say a squared can be divided by 2. So you can now say 2 is a factor or 2 can go into a squared. Then 2 also goes into into a. If it can go into a squared, then it can also go into a. Now, if we say you can write 4 over 2. If you say 2 can go into 4, this means you are going to get a certain number which is a constant. It is a rational number. Okay? So 2 can go into 4 and that is going to give you 2. Now, I've just put k there. And we can also write this as 2 times a certain number k that is going to give you 4. So whenever a number can go into another number, there is another number that we can multiply with that number to get that number which it can go into. So if we say 2 can go into a, then there is a certain number that we can multiply with 2 for us to be able to get a. So we can write it as 2k is equal to a. So I'm going to square both sides at this point, or I'll just speak it like this, and then I'm going to go in this first condition. Where there is A, I'm going to replace with 2K. So that is going to give us, where there is A, I'm going to put 2K, but remember it is A squared, and that is going to be equal to 2B squared. So 2K squared, this is going to give us 4K squared, and this is going to be equal to 2B squared. Dividing both sides by 2, we're going to get b squared being equal to 2k squared. This is telling us that 2 can also go into b squared. Okay. So if 2 goes into b squared, then 2 goes also into what? Goes into b also. Now, what we have found here is that these two can go into A and these two, these two can also go into B. And for a rational number, these two numbers are called co-primes. They can't have the same number that can go into them without leaving a remainder except one. One is the only number that can go into both of them. So this tells us that we, our assumption is wrong. Then we can conclude to show that it is irrational. So the last statement we can make is since both A and B can be divided by 2.
this violates our assumption our assumption that A and B are co-primes. A and B are co-primes. At the beginning, I just didn't write that A and B are co-primes, but we should have said at the very point when we said let root 2 be equal to A and B, we should have said where A and B are co-primes. So since both A and B can be divided by 2, this violates our assumption that A and B are co-primes. Therefore, root 2 is irrational. So that is how we get to show. It's not rational, then it is irrational. Okay, let's consider just this one. Show that 1 plus root 3 is irrational, given that root 3 is irrational. These are the very simple ones which we can deal with. So again, we're going to assume that it is rational. Assume 1 plus root 3 is rational. So if we take this assumption, that means 1 plus root 3 can be written in the form A over B. And then I'm going to take 1, the other side, to remain with the root 3 alone. That is going to be A over B minus 1. And this will give us root 3 is equal to, now here, where A and B are integers. Okay. So root th root 3 is going to be equal to, if we get to add this as a single fraction, that is going to give us A minus B over B. Now, whenever you subtract integers, the answer is always an integer. And whenever you divide an integer by an integer, the answer is going to be rational. So this part is rational. But this part, we've been told, is what is irrational. So we can make a statement. A rational number can't be equal to an irrational number. So since a minus b, the one on top of the fraction, and the one down the fraction are integers, then the fraction, then a minus b over b is rational. But we know that this is irrational. An irrational number cannot be equal to a rational number. And then we can conclude root 3, 1 plus root 3 is not rational. And when it is not rational, then it is irrational. Since a minus b and b are integers, then a minus b over b is rational. And a rational number cannot be equal to an irrational number. Therefore, 1 plus root 3 is not rational or it is irrational. And the last one here, show that root 3 plus root 2 is irrational, given that root 6 is irrational. So we are saying that whenever you add a rational number and an irrational number, the answer is always going to be irrational. And when you add two irrational numbers, let's see what we are going to find. The answer is also going to be irrational. So again, we are going to assume We're going to assume that root 3 plus root 2 is rational. So this assumption, then we're going to say root 3 plus root 2 is going to be equal to A over B, where A and B are integers or co-primes. We can use any of those two words. Integers or co-primes. That means they can be divided by the same number. Now, from here, I'm going to square both sides. And this is going to give us, we first get the first one, root 3 squared, that will give us a 3. And then plus, we're going to multiply 2 times root 3 times root 2. That is going to give us 2 root 3 root 2. And then I'm going to square the second one. That is going to give us a 2. And that will be equal to a squared divided by b squared. So we're going to add 3 and a 2. That is going to give us a 5. And that will be 2. What we can multiply what is inside the root. That will give us a 6. And that is going to be equal to a squared divided by b squared. I can take 5 the other side. So we're going to have 2 root 6 being equal to a squared over b squared minus 5. And this will give us 2 root 6 being equal to a squared 
minus 5b squared over b squared and then I can divide both sides by these two and these two will simply cancel out it will just go in the denominator of the other one so it will be here now since a and b are integers whenever you multiply whenever you square an integer the answer is an integer when you square an integer and you multiply by an integer the answer will always be an integer you can think of 0 0 squared times 5 is an integer negative 10 squared times negative 5 is an integer any number and then in the denominator also have got an integer squared times 2 is always an integer so on top we have got an integer down we also have an integer an integer over an integer is always rational but we know that root 6 is irrational so we'll conclude since a squared minus 5b squared what is on top and what is down 2b squared are integers then the fraction Is, is what is rational but we know that a rational number cannot be equal to an irrational number then we are going to conclude therefore root 3 plus root 2 the one we are given originally is not rational or it is irrational so that is going to be the the answer then thank you so much for watching enjoy your day